Hello and welcome to the Friday, August 4th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got an interesting malware walkthrough today from Jan. It was one of those uh, fairly common sort of purchase order emails uh, that included a zipped uh, link file. The link file itself then executed a PowerShell uh, to download an additional batch file that then would install the actual uh, malware. Uh, pretty straightforward in hindsight, kind of what's happening here. Pretty common also to see compressed uh, link files uh, being used to, to sort of initiate a compromise. What's somewhat surprising here is even though all of the different techniques being used here, the obfuscation such, none of that is terribly sophisticated. But on virus total, this particular sample still had zero hits, kind of showing again the gaps in anti-malware, in particular if you're relying on just sort of simple static analysis without actually running the malware. And Microsoft's threat intelligence team published an interesting blog post with details regarding an attack that Microsoft calls Midnight Blizzard. They believe it is associated with the Russian government. This particular attack is heavy on social engineering. It uses Microsoft Teams as a vehicle here to reach its victims. It does start out by naming itself something like Microsoft Identity Protection. The account is then labeled as external, but of course they then claim to come from Microsoft and they registered some pretty plausible domains like on Microsoft.com and then they're using, for example, teamsprotection.onmicrosoft.com. They use then social engineering in order to trick the victim into, for example, revealing two-factor authentication codes or approving logins via the Microsoft Authenticator app. Pretty interesting and uh, right now very targeted, but this is certainly a technique that may trickle down as it has proven to be successful here and other actors will probably pick up on it. Living off the land binary and scripts or LOLBAS is one of those threats that's really hard to get sort of a handle on in the sense that attackers are using normal binaries that are installed on many systems by default in order to, for example, download malicious scripts. The problem is that it's really hard to get a handle on which scripts and binaries could possibly be used here. A blog post by Nir Chaco with Pantera does attempt to find a method to automatically find these binaries that could be used to download other files. Nir did apply this technique to binaries that come as part of Microsoft Office and found a number of of new, so far not really known as being abusable binaries that you'll probably see on many systems. The important part for defenders here, of course, is that now you can, for example, look for anomalous behavior originating or associated with these binaries. And Google's cybersecurity action team acknowledged a technique being used by attackers in order to sneak malicious applications into the Google Play Store. This technique has been covered off and on uh, for a while now by ESET. Uh, Brian Krebs, I think, wrote about it. The basic trick here is that the attacker is submitting a benign application to the Google Play Store, which will, of course, then be approved. It passes all the tests that Google typically runs, but then after the application has been live for a while, malicious code is being loaded via dynamic code loading. This is something that Android allows, Apple doesn't allow, and what it basically means is that part of the application is not loaded from Google's Play Store, but then sort of dynamically loaded from a server that the attacker controls. And of course, the attacker may then at any time swap that code for something malicious. 
And then I have uh, two quick vulnerabilities I want to get uh, in front of you before the weekend. One affects Aruba CX switches. It's an authenticated remote code execution. And uh, yes, uh, patches are available. The second one is in uh, Mitel My Voice systems. Uh, these are sort of these uh, VoIP uh, controller systems. Two vulnerabilities here, both rated uh, critical. And also allowing arbitrary command injection. So definitely something that you probably want to have patched. Well, and that's it for today. Uh, thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.